Welcome to the 2020 Chesley Awards. I am so excited and happy for you all to be here. Um, ASFA, I'm gonna talk about a little bit about ASFA just so you guys <laughs> are aware, but ASFA is the Association of Science Fiction and Fantasy Artists. Welcome. And, oh no, it's going down for the Sorry, wait. <laughs> and we, um, we do the Chesley Awards every year. We've been doing them since 1985. It started out the first year as the ASFA Awards. And then in 1986, uh, Chesley Bonisell passed away, who was kind of known as the father of astronomical art. And so we decided that year to not have a Chesley or ASFA Award. And then the next year we had the Chesleys. We are a not all volunteer organization. So I am the president of the organization and we have a board um, that supports all of our activities. We do a lot of different events. We've done gallery exhibits. We've done um, things for other conventions for Worldcon. We typically have a um, like a space for artists as well. Um, but we, we're here to support you guys. That being said, we could always use more volunteers, um, whether it's helping writing articles for our brand new fancy website or checking eligibility suggestions for the Chesleys, checking over my personally bad grammar or the large and small things that you can just do to help out. So if anybody <laughs> wants to help out, I would love to help. help. Um, but this, this year's Chesley Award, we uh, had a artist named Joy Alyssa Day create it. And there is that beautiful award. It was um, this year, NASA and former astronauts commemorated the 50th anniversary of Apollo 13. On April 13th, 1970, the Apollo 13th lunar landing was aborted in what would become a historic mission. The Apollo 13th lunar landing was, um, it was crippled and it's it was, and spacecraft splashed down on April 17th, 1970. So this piece is four inches wide, 12 inches deep and four inches tall. The water is sculpted, fused glass and is blown um, with the Apollo capsule attached. The capsule is engraved and painted for the doors and windows. Thank you, Joy, for such a beautiful piece. And I hope that all of the people that will be receiving them enjoy it. We also, send out a pin that goes to all the winners. And that is created every year by Spring Schoenhuth and is based on one of Chesley Bonestell's most famous pieces from 1944. And it's the view of Saturn seen from its largest moon Titan. Again, thank you so much Spring for creating that for us. All right, so without further ado, let's get on to the Chesleys. Our first two presenters are Mia Araujo and Lauren Brown. Mia is a traditional uh, fantasy artist and is currently working on her own illustrated novel based on Alice in Wonderland. They are both co-hosts of a new YouTube channel and bi-weekly podcast called Painted in Color, and I hope you guys can check it out. Mia? Thank you, Sarah. It's an honor to present the award for Best Hardback Book Cover. The best book covers make readers out of us and introduce us to our favorite authors by distilling their magnificent stories into a single compelling image. The nominees are Tommy Arnold, Gideon the Ninth, Chan Wen, The Storm Crow, Carla Ortiz, The Rage of Dragons, Fei Fei Run, Descendant of the Crane. Michael Whalen, Empire of Grass. And Eric Wilkerson, Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky. And the winner of Best Hardback Book Cover is
Eric Wilkerson, Tristan Strong punches a hole in the sky. Uh, I want to thank, uh, <laughs> thank you to the ASFA uh, board, Sarah Felix, all the members of the uh, ASFA that voted for me uh, in this category from wherever you were in the world. Uh, a huge thank you to Rick Riordan, Kwame Mbalia, and everyone at, the, at Disney Publishing. Uh, you, you really could have gone with anybody for, for this cover, but you chose me. And I'm just, uh, just eternally grateful for that opportunity because I was untested with middle grade covers. And you just said, that's the person we want. And it opened doors that this cover, this illustration, this one illustration opened doors that I didn't know existed. Um, and that with companies that I never would have dreamed uh, having the opportunity to work with. And that started with you guys. So thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you as well to my, my loving, supportive, uh, amazing wife. Uh, I don't know where I'd be, honestly, without you. And uh, you have to deal with my anxious mess uh, at around every uh, deadline. So uh, I can't thank you enough for just putting up with me. Um, <laughs> there's more deadlines to come. Um, this is just, this is surreal. So I'm just uh, going to take it <laughs> take it a moment at a, at a time here. Um, I just want to thank my parents as well. And since I have this opportunity uh, for just encouraging me and supporting me uh, when, and believing in me when I didn't believe in myself, uh, especially when they would ask me, is there anybody out there that looks like you doing this for a living? Like, why don't you go back to school and study something else. And I knew that this is what I wanted uh, with every ounce of my being. So uh, I stuck with it. Um, I just know that when I was growing up, sci-fi art, sci-fi fantasy art was pretty much devoid of any kind of representation. And I know that if a book like this existed when I was a kid, like scanning the shelves of Walden books, I would have snatched it up so fast and, bid, and, and, and been uh, an even more voracious reader um, at the time. And I, I, just seeing people's, seeing kids reading this book, seeing that reaction, that response, uh, it makes me feel good to be a part of that. Um, but to, I would just say to all the artists, authors of color that um, uh, love this genre and they love making, you love making the art and you haven't really felt uh, like you could get ahead in this, in this industry or that they would even be receptive to what you have to offer, keep doing what you love. This is your time. Um, representation matters. So uh, we're here and uh, we're going to keep doing it. We're going to keep putting it out there. Um, but thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to uh, the ASFA. And uh, I have a deadline, so I'm going to get back to work. All right. And uh, Lauren Brown. Lauren Brown is the Emmy Award winning illustrator and game developer working as an associate art director in Austin. Lauren will be presenting best cover paperback or e book category. Lauren? Thank you very much for this honor. Through the mediums of paperbacks and ebooks, amazing book covers invite readers from all over the world to explore different realities and possibilities. Here are the nominees for best cover, paperback or ebook. David Curtis, Silver in the Wood. Jamie Jones, The Warrior Moon. 
Amanda Make Peace, The Long List Anthology, Volume 5. David Palumbo, Wild Cards 9, The Joker Town Shuffle. Dan Dos Santos, The Cunning Man. And Jeremy Wilson, Seven Blades in Black. And the award for best paperback cover, oh, sorry, for best cover, paperback or ebook goes to. Amanda Makepeace, The Long List Anthology, Volume 5. Life isn't a journey of one path. It is a myriad of adventures full of joys and hardships. Fantasy art allows us to open doors to new adventures infused with magic and wonder. I've been blessed to walk through these doors and share my daydreams with others. I hope I've left more joy in my wake than anything else. My thanks to Asfa and to all of you who have supported me on this journey. Thank you for this honor. Thank you, Lauren. And uh, our next presenters are Colin and Christine Poole. Colin and Christine Poole are a collaborative art couple working in bronze, clay, and oils. They are the founders of the Spectrum Rising Award and Muse Awards and are monthly contributors to Muddy Colors. Their paintings and sculptures have been nominated for Chesley's recognized in the awards for Spectrum, infected by art, and in 2020, they won their the first prize in Beautiful Bazaar's International Art Prize Sculpture category. Colin and Christine. Hi. Hi, guys. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> you know, the first magazine was published almost three centuries ago, and ever since then, illustrators have been bringing them to life, often under tight deadlines and even tighter budgets. Their illustrations have informed, engaged, and inspired us to this day. Which brings us to 2020. We're thrilled to announce the nominees for the best magazine illustration category. With this group of uber talented artists, we can definitely say that we buy the magazines for the pictures. And the nominees are? Yoshioka. Bloodborne, number 12. Evan Cagle, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, The Chosen Ones, number one. Matt Dixon, Clark's World, number 152. Tiffany England, Into the Wild Blue Line Yonder, Cricket Magazine. Tithy Lewithon, Lightspeed, number 109. Reiko Murakami, Lightspeed, number 104. <laughs> Here we go. And the winner is Evan Cagle. So uh, we have received a speech, an acceptance speech for Evan, um, and I'm going to read it. Good evening, and thank you so much. I'm loath to lead with a cliche, but it really is such an honor just to be nominated. For years, I worked in games, animation, film, and advertising. Like many working artists, in most of those roles, I was relatively anonymous and not entirely able to exercise my own aesthetic muscles. That changed in 2019, when I decided to focus my efforts on illustration and comics. To say that I was not expecting this sort of professional reception is, at the very least, an understatement. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, The Chosen Ones, is the very first published comic cover of my career. And so to win this award is doubly special to me. It represents a sort of validation, of course, but more than that, to be recognized by my peers and the ASFA feels like an unbelievably gracious welcome into the fold. 
For years, I've admired the work of many of you. To now be counted among you is a profound honor. I'd like to thank Daphna Plaven at Boom for taking a chance on me and helping me begin a new leg in my artistic journey. She was the first editor to approach me about comics work, and I'm so grateful for her confidence in me. I hope this award serves as confirmation that her instincts were justified. Sincere thanks to the book's creative team, whose feedback and vision helped guide me through the process, especially Marguerite Scott, whose vision of a hellish California mission was such a perfect, if unexpected, pairing for my style. I'd also like to thank my husband, Joseph, for believing in me and trusting that I wouldn't bankrupt us by pursuing a new career in comics and illustration. To all my family, my parents and my sister, I can't imagine how anyone does this work without the constant support and cheerleading for which I'm so deeply indebted to you. Lastly, but certainly not least, I'd like to thank the Association of Science Fiction and Fantasy Artists for this award and for all they do to connect artists, publishers, and aficionados across the world. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Congratulations. And now they're going to present the interior illustration category. A book may be judged by its cover, but the interior illustration gives life to the story. We have all experienced a moment of turning a page in the book and being literally stopped in our imaginative tracks by what we found there. Great illustrations imprint in our memory and last a lifetime. And the nominees for the best interior illustrations are? Francois Baranger, The Call of Cthulhu. Audrey Ben Jameson, Time Variants of Snow. Amanda Makepeace, Fanfare for Rose. John Picaccio, Nine House by Lee Bardugo. Armando Bebe, Knowledgeable Creatures. Alan Williams, Pan's Labyrinth. And the winner of Best Interior Illustration is John Picasso, Ninth House. Hey there, Aspa. Hey, thank you so much. This is a huge honor. Um, I'm very grateful. Uh, the, the, the piece is called Ninth House, uh, and it's for the book Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Uh, it's one of the best books that came out last year. Uh, this, this is an unusual job in that um, I usually have my gigs given to me by art directors and by publishers. And this one actually came from Lee herself and, and as well as my agent, Joanna Volpe. And without those two people, this doesn't happen. Uh, it, this was not only a job brought to me from them, but it was a, a piece that wasn't sort of just gonna be a piece of fan art. It was gonna be a piece that was actually gonna be in the book. Uh, so getting commissioned straight from an author uh, for a piece that's gonna be actually published within the, the book, that's not normal but I, I guess it's happening more and more these days. I'm just grateful it happened here. So this is for Lee and for Joe. And in a way, I feel like we kind of share this together because this, this was the first official depiction of Galaxy Stern. Uh, and it felt like I was playing in the sandbox with two friends and uh, I'm very grateful for the experience. So thank you for this honor. I'm just really grateful to be part of this continuum of artists that are honored with the Chesleys this year. Thanks so much, take care. Okay, so now Colin and Christine are going to announce me. <laughs> it's the great pleasure of introducing the next presenter, Sarah Felix. Sarah Felix is a Hugo and Chesley nominated artist working in mixed media with a focus on ink and resin. She is a two-time Hugo-based designer and is president of the ASFA. 
Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> um, the, the best gaming illustration is a relative newcomer to the Chesley Awards having been added in 1999. <laughs> There is so much great art out there from magic cards, video games, game systems, board games, and the games just wouldn't be the same without such a wonderful art and imagery. So the nominees for best gaming related illustration are Wiley Beckert, Rose Thorn, Acolyte, Edith Compete, Brazen Borrower, Melissa Gay, Summer Dandelion. Omar Ryan, oh, sorry, go down. Omar Ryan, Blackson Intruder. Charles Erbach, King by His Own Hand. And the award for best ga gaming related illustration goes to, come on, let's see, let's see. All right. I don't know. <laughs> Goes to Charles Erbach for King by His Own Hand. My heartfelt thanks to Asfa and all the fans, peers, and collectors who voted in this year's Chesley Awards. It truly is an honor. 30 years ago, when I began my journey as an artist, it was gaming art that most inspired me to be an illustrator. This art pays homage to that heritage, celebrating the games, books, entertainment, artists, and players that shape the industry we know today. I never imagined this art would connect with so many people around the world, and I'm humbled by their support. Congratulations to all the other Chesley winners, and thank you so much for this award. Okay, our next presenter is Lauren Panapento. As the creative director for Orbit Books for 11 years, Lauren has designed and art directed hundreds of science fiction and fantasy book covers. You can also find her writing at Muddy Colors and Drawn and Drafted. And she is also the co-founder of the gallery Everyday Original. Lauren will be presenting best product illustration and best color unpublished. Hello. Um, I'm really excited to be presenting product design, product illustration, um, because it is the most varied uh, category. You can have calendars next to playing cards, next to beer labels, next to, you know, anything under the sun. And um, it's really fun to see such a wide range of entries. And the nominees are Oliver Barrett, Full Metal Jacket. <clears throat> Te'ani Farr, The Sky Mage and the God Eye. Emily Hare, Dragon's 2020 Calendar. Kezrek Laxon, Cover Art for Stronger. John Picasso, La Cantorita. And Rachel Quinlan, the Old Fay Tuck Box. And the envelope. The winner is um, Rachel Quinlan, the Old Fay Tuck Box. So while this was an incredible surprise, um, this game was a huge labor of love and wouldn't have been possible without the art contributed by members of the Changeling Artist Collective. So thanks to all of them for helping me bring this project to life. Um, thank you to my family for their continued support of my art career. Um, thank you to the members of the ASFA who thought the wor work was worthy of recognition. And uh, thanks to Sarah Felix for all of her efforts in making the Chesley Awards possible. Um, this was probably the best thing that happened to me in 2020. So um, I'm greatly appreciative. Thanks again. Hello, everybody. I'm back again. <laughs> um, 
I love presenting uh, unpublished categories at awards because it is where all the wonderful personal pieces live that those pesky art directors can't mess with too much. And it's also where the killed pieces occasionally live, where you can prove art directors were wrong if they killed a piece. <laughs> and as an art director, I appreciate um, being proven wrong sometimes. And the nominees are Bruce Bernese, If Stone Could Cry, Martina Fachkova, Spellbinding Terror, Te Hu, Who Am I, La Marcarena, Debbie Hughes, The Raven, The Wolf, and The Maiden, Elizabeth Leggett, The Devil, The City, David Seidman, The Divine Migration, and Lauren Ray Snow, Anima Sola One. And the winner. It's very hard not to open these envelopes in advance. But Sarah sealed them up pretty well. Um, I was like holding them up to the light, couldn't see anything. And the winner is Debbie Hughes, The Raven, The Wolf, and The Maiden. Hello, everyone. I just want to say that it is a privilege and an honor to receive this award. In this category, there are some extraordinary art and artists who I'm privileged to share the stage with, as well as amazing art in all the categories. My thanks go out to ASPA, to the ASPA committee, to Sarah Felix, and to all of the ASPA members who voted. Thank you again. I appreciate this. Good luck to all the nominees. Stay safe and best wishes. I did that purposely. I did not want this envelopes <laughs> to be open. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> Our next presenter is John Picasso. And John has illustrated covers for some of the most in, uh, important science fiction and fantasy books releases in the last two decades. He is this year's Hugo Award winner for Best Professional Artist, as well as the 2020, 20, 20, <laughs> 2020, 2020, the 2020 Locust Award and 2020 Kate. Wilhelm Solstice Award for the, from the Science Fiction Writers of America. He is an ASPA member and an eight-time Chesley winner, and he's the founder of the Game Changing Mexiconics Initiative. John? How's it going, everyone? Uh, so this uh, category, Best Monochrome Work Unpublished, uh, I think from year to year, it, it seems to be like one of the most competitive um, often one of the most agonizing when you're trying to whittle down from the long list down to the finalists. And uh, I would say this year is, is no exception. So here we go. We're gonna read off the, the, nom the nominees for best monochrome work unpublished. Uh, first one, Ken Cunningham, both their coats were heavy. Next, Jeff Echevarria, doctor, my eyes. Next, Thiani Farr, she who sits at the end of the world upon a mountain of bones dreaming. Next, Melissa Sue Stanley, the Tootsie Monster. And finally, Alan Williams, the Hidden Light. All right, so here we go. Make sure I get the right envelope. Best monochrome work unpublished, just like Lauren, I was trying futilely to see who this was, but uh, I waited, I was patient. Diani Farr, looks like this is your uh, first Chesley win, congratulations. Hola amigos, muchísimas, muchísimas gracias, en verdad. Thank you so much, everyone. I am so honored, not only for being nominated, but for actually being la primera mujer mexicana in winning a Chesley Award. I don't know what to say. I didn't expect this. En verdad, I come from a little town in the middle of the mountains of Mexico called Jalapa, Veracruz, Glen Nueva So you can imagine how otherworldly this feels for me right now. I would love 
to see um, mass mujeres mexicanas from all around Mexico being invited to more shows, more events, being nominated, winning prizes and having our voices heard. I think this is such an important conversation we should all be having right now. En verdad, en verdad que sí, en México tenemos una cantidad enorme de tradiciones, de mitos, leyendas, de supersticiones, además de muchísima, muy, muchísima gente con tanto, tanto talento que yo siento que solamente hace falta más plataformas para que cada quien pueda tener su propia voz. Yo tengo mucho que, que agradecer a todas las personas que desde el inicio han creído en mí y en mi trabajo, aún en ocasiones cuando ni siquiera yo lo he hecho. Muchas gracias a mis amigos, a mi familia y a mis increíbles seguidores que han estado conmigo en las buenas y en las malas. Muchas gracias also to mi familia Mexicanex. You mean the world to me. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for inspiring me and motivating every single moment. And John, thank you so much for all the amazing advice you are always giving all of us. Thank you also, Sarah, for being so kind and so patient with everyone. Um, I am so honored, I am so humbled for being part of this show. Muchísimas, muchísimas gracias. Wow. I mean, the Chesleys have always been an international award and I think that's the first time I've ever heard where it was in Spanish, so it's beautiful. Uh, congratulations, Diani. Um, our next award, uh, this is gonna be best three-dimensional. Um, you know, in recent years, I think we, we've seen the gamut of media within this, uh, within this category expand and explode. And um, this year, I, I can really tell you, when you're looking at the long list, uh, getting down to the, the finalists here, I don't think I've ever quite seen the, the range be as wide as it is here. So it's, it's a great thing to see. Um, our nominees this year for the 2020 Best Three-Dimensional Chess League are... Daria Oksanova, The Crane Wife. Sarah Felix, The Cosmic Egg. Christine and Colin Poole, The Spinner of Dreams. Forrest Rogers, Celine. And finally, Vincent Villafranca, Unbridled and Unfettered. And uh, here we go. The award for the Chesley, I should say, the 2020 Chesley for best three dimensional goes to, congratulations, Forrest Rogers. Celine, winner, 2020 Chesley, best three dimensional. Hello, my friends. It's good to kind of see you almost. Thank you, thank you so much for this. It, it, it's a tremendous lift and encouragement. And, uh, and it's crazy, it, it's crazy to win this because, because there is so much astonishing work out there, truly. And in fact, in fact, thank you. Thank you all for that even more because when I, when I emerge from my lair here and, and go on the internet and see what everyone is working on, it's a marvelous, it's a magic series of doors and worlds that would never exist if it weren't for you. And it feels like the quality of beauty or amazing strangeness or grace or simply a kind of rightness of, of form or story, those things feel like an antidote in this moment. They feel like a healing poultice, so thank you. And never stop, never stop. So thoughts with you, 
Much love to you. Stay safe. Stay well. Meet again. Thank you, John. All right, our final presenter is Christian Alsman. Christian has spent the last 21 years as a concept artist and art director for, in the film industry, first with Industrial Light and Magic and recently with Lucasfilm. He is currently creating concept art for The Mandalorian as well as other Star Wars projects. He is most well known for designing both BB-8 and The Child. He will be presenting the, our final two categories, Best Art Director and Lifetime Artistic Achievement Award. Christian? Hello. Uh, so honored to be here uh, to announce the category for the art directors, without whom, without their guidance and uh, skill, we, we, we could never be lured into falling in love with all of our favorite books and games. The nominees for Best Art Directors are Christine Fultzer from torandtor.com, Irene Gallo from torandtor.com, Kate Irwin from Wizards of the Coast, Lauren Panapinto from Orbit Books, Nadine Shackle from Ulysses Spiele. Cynthia Shepard from Wizards of the Coast. Okay, all right. The envelope, if I can get it in focus. All right, here we go. And best art director, Lauren Panapinto from Orbit Books. Thank you for honoring me with this award. And thank you especially to Christian for presenting it. Your work brings me so much joy, not just as a professional art director, but also as a Star Wars fan. I believe being an art director is a lot like being the coach of a sports team. You're only as good as the players and the management you work with. And I'm very lucky at Orbit to not only have great management, our publisher and editors and authors and staff, but also to have a great team of players who are all our freelance artists. I maybe pick their positions and point them at the goal and run a little interference, but they're the stars that hit it out of the park. I also believe that being an art director is a bit of being a gardener. You have to nurture the new talent seedlings pushing through the soil, as well as support the mighty oaks that are protecting the entire garden. This year when our community is entirely online and entirely virtual, I want you to remember to think of it as a garden. You choose what it looks like by what you choose to nurture within it. Thank you to the ASFA and all the artists who voted, and of course, all the artists I worked with this year. I look forward to seeing you all in person as soon as possible. All right, so last but not least, and very much not least, because the list of names on this uh, next award for Lifetime Artistic Achievement Award is uh, very impressive, amazing, amazingly impressive. Um, the nominees for Lifetime Artistic Achievement Award are Yoshitaka Amano, Stephanie Law, Gregory Manchess, Ian McKegg, Sid Mead, Wendy Peeney, Alan Williams. All right, here we go. Here is, that was the back, here's the front. It's sealed better. All right, here we go. And the winner of the Lifetime Artistic Achievement Award is the legendary Sid Mead. 
here's a selection of works by this legendary talent. Thank you, Christian. Um, I want to thank everybody for attending. Uh, congratulations to all the winners and also congratulations to all the nominees as well. Thank you everyone for your suggestions year over year. They help us so much in creating such a great and varied group of artists on our, on our roster every year. I want to thank IX Arts and my tech team for the support, as well as the ASPA board and the Chesley committee. Now I'm pretty much out of wine and this is my last tiara, so we're done. So thank you so much for attend for coming and watching us. And I am so happy I got the right envelopes to the right people with the right names in them because I've been worried about that <laughs> ever since I sent them. So thank you, thank you all.